The problem of CVJ anomalies in children is the sheer breadth of pathology that can lead to problems in this region. And surgeries, especially screw fixation, in this patient population can be challenging. One of the challenges faced by the surgeon is the distorted anatomy. Like this two-year-old girl with aplasia of the C2 neural arch, there are no fixation points in C1 or C2. And sometimes, children develop these problems very early in life and thus can have miniature anatomy. This two-year-old child had a bifid C1 arch with infolding of the edges causing spinal cord compression. This is his real-size 3D printed model and you can appreciate how small his bones are. Preoperative planning for any complex orthopedic surgery, whether it is pelvis fracture or craniovertebral deformity, requires the surgeon to create a mental image of the patient's three-dimensional anatomy. Traditional radiographic films rarely provide any useful information in this regard. Some surgeons go through images on DICOM CDs or hospital packs. These are scrollable images that have more information than films but these images are in orthogonal planes, that is 90 degree to each other, and they cannot be manipulated. What is actually required is multiplanar reconstruction or MPR in non-orthogonal planes, where we have the ability to move these axes in the plane of the screw trajectory. Now, there are two ways of doing this. One, you can go down in the radiology department and ask your radiology colleague to do the MPR for you if they have time. And the second method is to do it yourself using freely available software. The problem of planning it with the radiologist is like watching someone do an anatomical dissection versus you doing it yourself. Thus, our hypothesis was that preoperative planning for pediatric craniovertebral anomalies done by the surgeon using MPR would provide much more anatomical information compared to planning on PAX images. So the aim of our study were to present a step-by-step -step workflow for MPR-based preoperative planning, to identify difficulties encountered while executing this plan. We also compared preoperative anatomical information obtained using MPR versus PACS. And finally, we present the clinical radiological outcomes of these surgeries, including complications. This was a retrospective study of 25 consecutive children less than 12 years old who were operated for these anomalies by two surgeons at two centers. All patients had a preoperative CT angiogram that was studied on the hospital PACS system. A tentative plan was made. Then the DICOM files were copied onto a CD-ROM and transferred to the surgeon's computer. And using an open source software called HOROS, the final preoperative plan was made. There were two aspects of preoperative planning that we looked for, feasibility of different screw anchors and identifying different anatomical anomalies. The feasibility of screw was checked using MPR. Four steps were followed. The first step was to move the axis to get a true sagittal, coronal, and axial image of the C2 vertebra. In the second step, we created parasagittal and paracoronal images in line with the screw trajectory. When the axis were in line with the proposed screw, the paracoronal images were scrolled to the narrowest width. If the diameter was more than 3.5 millimeters, then it was considered suitable for a 3 millimeter diameter screw. Then the third step, the entry point of the screw trajectory was marked with a fiducial marker. Similar steps were done on the opposite side. In the final step, a 3D reconstruction was done and unnecessary areas were cropped out. Here, the entry points for the screws that were marked with a fiducial marker are visible and help decide the entry point for the screw during surgery. These 3D images were also used to note morphological anomalies as well as vertebral artery anomalies in this region in a systematic manner. The operating surgeon compared the information obtained using PACS versus that obtained using MPR and graded it into three categories. Grade A was given to those where substantial new information was obtained on MPR compared to PACS, which altered the tentative surgical plan. Grade B was given to those where information obtained on MPR was confirmatory, allowed a better visualization and understanding, but did not change the tentative plan. And Grade C was where there was no added information on MPR. 
The cohort of 25 children we looked at were relatively quite young with an average age of 7.2 years and about 72% of these patients had congenital anomalies or were dysplastic. All patients presented with neurological deficit. The commonest morphological anomaly was C2-C3 fusion followed by basilar invagination. 40% of patients had abnormal variations in the vertebral artery. And when we looked at the suitability of various screws and the different reasons why it is not possible to place them, we found that C2 laminar screw had the highest percentage of sites, about 70% that would accept this screw. And that is why it was the most common screw used in our series. Our series had, has the third largest number of pediatric patients in which laminar screw has been used for fixation. More importantly, using MPR, we discovered a new entry point and trajectory path for C2 laminar screws that has not been described in literature so far. As per the operating surgeon's grading with regards to pathoanatomy, in 72% of patients, new and substantial information was obtained using MPR. And with respect to feasibility of screws, in all patients, MPR was crucial in providing information that was not obtained on PACS. In about two-thirds of the surgeries, there was OC fusion. Seven patients had C1-C2 fusions. In four patients, the preoperative plan could not be executed for various reasons and salvage techniques had to be used. Two of these four patients developed serious complications. There were three complications overall. This first child had a Morcoy syndrome, had extremely small dysplastic bones. Two C2 laminar screws were attempted, but they cut out on table. Hooks were used, but the hooks migrated into the spinal canal and caused quadriplegia. The second complication was this back out of C3 lateral mass screw in the acute post-operative period. The patient was taken back to the OR. This was revised with eventual good outcome. And the third was a vertebral artery injury, again, fortunately, without any negative consequence. Overall, the complication rate in our series is 12% and is comparable to the about 15% complication rate as reported in literature. Our complication seems lesser in spite of having a younger cohort of patients, most of whom who had deficits or had congenital or dysplastic anomalies. However, it is difficult to conclude by such comparison alone that MPR helped reduce these complications. All patients improved neurologically except one patient who had a post-operative worsening. We had no non-unions. Three patients had minor screw malpositions without any problems. The limitations of this study is that it is a relatively small series of rare problems. It reports the experience of two surgeons. The utility of MPR is graded subjectively by these surgeons so that there is a possibility of bias. We do not have a control group where MPR has not been used and it is difficult to prove objectively the usefulness of this software in that fashion. However, we believe that the benefit derived from such preoperative planning is related to the complexity of the case. More complex the case, more the benefit. The benefit is also related to surgeon surgeon's experience. Less experienced surgeons might find this method of preoperative planning useful even for the simpler anomalies. However, even the most skilled surgeons might derive benefit in rare and complicated situations. There are other technologies that can help instrument CVJ anomalies like computer navigation or 3D printing. However, this is an additional expense and still it is not widely available everywhere. To conclude, MPR is a free tool that anybody can use for planning complex orthopedic procedures irrespective of the navigational technologies that can be used. Preoperatively dissecting these images virtually on your computer can only add to your understanding of anatomy. Thus, you can anticipate problems and avoid surprises. We would recommend that all orthopedic surgeons should learn to do the MPR themselves rather than relying it on the radiologist. Thank you very much.